Welcome to another week of PTZ Optics Live. I have with me Dr. Andrew Cross. Thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure. I'm excited to be here. Um, you're definitely one of uh, everyone's uh, thought leaders and one of the uh, people in the industry that a lot of people have questions for you about this new tech NDI. Um, let me first talk a little bit about our show and introduce our show, and then we'll jump right into a lightning round where we can get to know you a little better. So as everyone knows, every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, we broadcast live on YouTube, and this is the show. Thank you so much for being here. We do this show for the live viewers. Uh, thank you so much for being here. If you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, every single week we donate to charity. Uh, we donate to a court-appointed special advocacy um, program where they help children in the court system uh, find families so that they can get adopted and get out of the juvenile court system. So we donate $20 every live show, and then for every like and every subscribe, we add additional dollars up to $250 a week. We've already donated over $15,000, so thank you so much, everyone who watches the show and supports us. Um, very quickly, wanted to review the October. October, we met with Broadfield and Video Guys, and we talked about their do, do, uh, DIY TriCaster system. Last week, we did a camera shootout with Sony, Vadio, and Panasonic, and PTZ Optics. This week, we're interviewing Andrew Cross, and then next week, we are having Teradek on the show to talk about their wireless transmission systems. But of course, the big thing on everyone's mind today is the new tech NDI. And I promise you guys, we're going to get some questions answered. We've got the creator here. Andrew, are you ready for the lightning round? Well, what would happen if I said no? <laughs> <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> okay, well, here we go. So Andrew, I'm going to ask, we have 60 seconds, I'm going to ask you a couple questions just to get to know you. Coffee or tea? Easy, coffee. Coffee, just like me, you gotta love it. <laughs> Talking or texting? Oh, definitely texting. Texting's great. Are you an emoji guy? Not really. Not really, just, just the quick and easy text. Got it. Android right. or iPhone? Oh, easy iPhone. iPhone's great, I love the iPhone. What is your favorite movie? Oh my gosh, I can't answer that in, 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 in a minute. I, I, I watch lots of stuff, um, I, everything. Okay, that's fine. Um, favorite book? Um, you know, I read, I, I don't read many books. I read online publishing, so scientific papers I read a lot of, um, not so much books. Last question, and we'll, we'll go a little bit over just so we can get to know you a little better. If you could travel back in time to watch 24 hours of history unfold, where and when would you go? You know, I, uh, this, I would actually go for future. I'm excited about where things are going much more than where things have been. We have a, the ability to shape the future. So I, I want to go for future, not the past. Sounds good to me. Okay, so we've got a nice little agenda here on the right-hand side. We've got eight topics, and I'm going to give you 60 seconds. Don't, don't worry if you need to go over, but it's just to keep us on pace, keep us on track. Let's start off with a new tech introduction for those folks who don't know new tech at all. So new tech, um, our goal is to make live video accessible to everybody. We want to make it so that anybody who wants to have a broadcast show can have one and can look great doing it and we want to make it easy to do so. So we, you know, we, uh, our kind of company slogan is we want to give everybody a voice through video, and that is what we try to do as best we reasonably can. So we, you know, we want to enable people. We don't want, we don't want a company to serve the highest end of broadcast. We want to make it, you know, we want to make products that, that can change the world of video because it's got to be fun while we do it. So, you know, we aren't driven just to make money. We, we want to do more than that. You know, when we, when we all, move on to other things we want to be able to say we made a difference and i think that that's something that we care a lot about and you know we want to make you know video is is changing the world and we want to help help make that happen quite frankly sounds good you're based in san antonio texas i believe that is correct privately owned sorry what did you say are, are you guys privately owned we are privately owned we're 100 percent private company wonderful Okay, so next question. We filled out that 60 seconds pretty well. 
I know. I would. Would you say that your the TriCaster is pretty much your like lead product? I, I I would say that. I think that we you know we have become known, particularly in the last year, for doing more than just TriCaster. I mean, obviously NDI has exceeded our expectations, but but you know when it comes to a product, TriCaster is obviously one of one of our larger products, and it certainly made a big difference to the market in in lots of ways. So, uh, do you want to introduce the TriCaster? Maybe just I know there's a lot of different models, but do you want just for those of the people who don't know what the TriCaster is, um, just briefly. So the the TriCaster is a all-in-one system that really takes everything you need to do a production and puts it into one system. And so you know, it really the, the, the you have to think back 15 years to how production was done. Back then, you needed a two three million dollar TV station or two or three million dollar production truck in order to produce a show. It took a lot of expensive equipment. It was hard to do. It took a lot of people to do. And our goal, as I said, at Butech has always been to, to enable people and allow anybody to do production who wants to. So what we started off doing is trying to work out how you can take all of that stuff, if you imagine, squeeze it all into a single product that allows one or maybe two operators to run everything and to produce a live show and to make it look as good as what's in it on TV for just a fraction of the cost. And so that's been our kind of overriding goal, um, you know, with TriCaster. And so, you know, over the years, we started off by taking what was a lot of traditional equipment, you know, media playback, DDRs, and camera control, and a bunch of the, the stuff that was in TV stations and kind of squeezed them into the box, made it do, do that. Um, but as time has gone by, it has started to do more and more and started to kind of redefine what really is the next generation of workflows and how TV is being produced today. So I think you know, it, it has been very interesting to see how it's evolved into much more than just a replacement for TV studio. And in many ways, it's defining what TV studios become. And that's maybe a more exciting position to be in in many ways. Certainly. And I think that's a great segue because, like you said, the, you're becoming known for more than just the TriCaster. Let's talk about this new tech NDI high level at this point, because I know in the Q&A we're going to get a lot of specific questions. So high level, what is the NewTek NDI? Okay, so NewTek NDI, um, the goal of NewTek NDI was to, you know, when you look at the industry and when you think about things are going, you know, you, you go to IBC, you go to NEB, you hear all these bars, all these things, you hear about, you know, is it going 4K or 3D or HDR and so on. and, and you know. I spent a lot of time thinking about all of this. And, you know, I don't know, and probably none of us really know which one of those will take off. But one thing I know for absolutely sure is that five, ten years from now, we're going to be doing whatever we're going to be doing, whichever one of those standards it's going to be, or which one of those specs in terms of 4K or HDR or whatever it's going to be, it's going to be done over IP. That just, that is a given. Um, and so, you know, given that, you know, what we decided to do is we said, look, we don't know, there's lots of things you don't know about the future. You don't know about where the industry is going. You don't know what's going to happen. Here's one thing we really do know. It is going to IP. So we really, do, you know, we said, look, let's, let's help make that happen. Let's, let's focus a lot of our attention on making that happen. Now, we were lucky because TriCaster, if you go way back to the beginning of the TriCaster days, we've actually been doing IP video for a long time. And what we've done is we had kept a lot of this, everything we gained for our kind of proprietary advantage. Um, you know, we, we had worked with Chiron, we'd worked with VizRT, we'd worked with a lot of companies, for about 40 companies that we'd worked with, and we'd made it so that they could send us video, but just us. But we, you know, but because we had worked with all of these companies, we built up this kind of workflow that allowed people to exchange video of IP. And so what, you know, what really, came to my mind is, look, why don't we take this? Why don't we take everything we've built up and give it to the industry as a whole to get you know, this IP revolution started? And that was kind of the, the thought that drove NPI. And that is actually how it got started. And, you know, and so when we opened this up, it, it, you know, even within our company, there was a lot of discussion about this because we were taking a lot of things that we'd done that we'd made unique to us and we were giving them away to everybody, including all of our competitors, um, helping them. And, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're all going to gain when the market gets better. We're all going to gain from this, and that is, you know, why we did it at the end of the day. And so, you know, we're, we're very proud of what we did. I think that it's, it's made a difference that, you know, we only launched this about a year and a half ago, and under no 
bets that I would have ever made, and I'm not a betting man. <laughs> but if, if I'd ever had to predict where it would have gone, I would never ever have predicted that, that we would have as broader adoption among as many people as we have. So, you know, to me, this has just been this exciting ride that I just never expected. So that's the short version of where NDR came from, at least. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing. Uh, it's an amazing way to put your company in the center um, by doing something like this, where instead of going proprietary, you're, you're allowing everyone to use it. And therefore, by def everyone is kind of putting that NDI in the center of so many different companies now and their integration. So uh, my hat is off to you. That's amazing. Uh, I was going to go on to customer use case. So now that the new tech NDI has come out, you said you know you never would have known uh, what what's happened. What was? Is, can you talk tell us about like an, a surprising NDI use case or an exciting use yeah. case that someone has uh, someone is using the NDI for? Yes, yeah, so, uh, and quite honestly, I, I can tell you of loads of them. And well, you know, so just to answer your question, you're asking about exciting things. I can give you innumerable use cases. That you would have expected, but those aren't the you know that, that, that those aren't the ones that that make me go wow I never expected that you know so it's been used in broadcast it's been used in schools it's been used in sports trucks it's been used all over the place but you know the the, the ones that surprise me and the ones that get me excited are the things that we never expected and you know some of the examples are there are um, and and maybe the most remarkable thing is you know uh, i i see everybody who's signing up for the sdk and you know i i, I mean and there, are, there are a lot of people at this point really a lot but you know every now and then a couple come through and you go wow okay so what are they doing with it and so you know when we saw people like xsplit broadcast make game streaming products that cost just a few dollars a month they added ndi and you know so th that was exciting when you see epic games um with the unreal engine adding nti those are ones that i would never have expected hmm. because when when we came out with nti we, we you know we expected that the people in our space and the our typical customers would be interested and a lot of the companies that we work with would be interested but you know and, and maybe this summarizes why i said that this has exceeded all of my expectations is the fact you you have a a protocol that is being used or a a a, a, an IP interchange format that is being used both by Epic Games in Unreal and XSplit Broadcast who make products that sell for a few dollars right the way up to VisRT who make products that are 50, 60 to hundreds of thousands of dollars. And you know, the, 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 the amount of the market that covers is just staggering and quite surprising. And, and it's almost hard to think that you can download free apps that have NDI and yet the highest end broadcast apps also have NDI. And that is surprising to me. Um, so it, you know that that's what what you know you know makes me surprised. I've seen you. You asked for customer use cases. I, I I'll tell you. I've, I'm seeing it used in nightclubs far more than I expected. I'm seeing it used in huge signage installations. So if you think about like the huge huge on stage shows where you have massive displays behind the show that you intermix with the show for real-time visualization we're seeing it used there those are all things that to me were not expected but i had never thought about even once when we came out with it and yet i'm getting sent you know images of people using it for those things that, that i just would have never expected well one of the interesting integration projects that i caught wind of uh, was uh, with wowza and apparently it's one of the, I was talking to Michael Cornett about this a little bit, one of the first kind of local area network streaming. It, there's something unique about it. I, you probably know better than I do. Can you tell us a little bit about this Wowza integration? Yeah, so so what we have done with Wowza at IBC is we announced a joint product with Wowza. Um, and, you, you know, take a step back. There are lots of video encoders out there. That, you know, that, that that is a huge market of people who make boxes that encode video. And you know, on one hand, our box does that, but right along with our kind of new tech philosophy, we try not to just make another product, another box like everybody else does. And so, when, you know, we're obviously very well known in live streaming. I think probably when it comes to, you know, money generating broadcasts for live, we are, you know, we, we probably have the lion's share of that market, our products used with. So we're very well known there, and we were thinking, how do we take this, take that, and make it accessible to even more people. But, you know, just making an encoding box, just 
that's not exciting. That's just doing the same things as everybody else. So we, you know, we've been friends with Wowser for a long time. And so we got to thinking, okay, so what about building a box that does the encoding, but isn't just limited to the encoding, it's also used for the distribution. And so, you know, by working with Wowser, we thought, look, we can make a product that for companies, for schools, for, for a whole new audience who don't want to be using YouTube or Facebook to do their broadcast because there were lots of scenarios where that doesn't make sense. That is a, a problem that's not being solved by the market right now. So if you make a product that can do the encoding but can also do the distribution, that is something pretty exciting that's not been done. And so that, that's how this product got started and what it is. Now, it obviously goes one step further because it, it does that distribution, but it also allows you to take it out to the, to the internet as well so that you can do a local distribution, say if you're a school, you can distribute your content locally to all of your classrooms, but you can also broadcast it out to Facebook Live and YouTube at the same time. Or if you are a, you know, an enterprise, if you're a company. So companies have a unique problem because if you have a few hundred employees, you probably don't have enough bandwidth into your building to even have all of your employees watch it on, online. It's just, you know, your pipe into the building's not wide enough for every one of them to display it. So you often want to broadcast locally, but you can still make it accessible to people on, on the, you know, through the traditional outlets as well. So that, that's the basics of the product. And, you know, I'm excited because this is not just another encoding box. This is so much more than that. And it solves problems that, that I think nobody else has solved. And that, that's exciting. And I think Wowser and, yeah, I, I think it's a great partnership. We're really excited to be work with Wowser. I mean, we have, you know, kind of the best live streaming integrated production tools combining with, you know, Wowser who make, you know, without a doubt, they're the, the largest player by far in the distribution market. So that, this is a pretty exciting project. Yeah, and th it's a great integration, obviously. Speaking of integrations, let's talk a little bit about the integrations that we've worked on together here at PTZ Optics and NewTek. So, um, you know, we, we have worked closely with PTZ Optics for, for years now. Um, I think that, you know, uh, we, gosh, we've got, you know, we've got multiple integration points. I mean, obviously we can control PTZ Optics cameras and, and I should say, because I, I don't, you know, I, I can tell you that within TriCaster, our integration with PTZ Optics cameras is about to get a whole heck of a lot better than it was in terms of, you know, how responsive the control is. So that, that's kind of a little tidbit for anybody who has PTZ Optics cameras who uses TriCasters. That's a, a patch that we're going to release very soon that just makes that integration far, far better than it is today. Um, but we, you know, as exciting is the fact that we can pull the, um, the stream directly off the PTZ Optics cameras in IP, and we can translate that into an NDI feed through NDI Connect. Um, but that, you know, the, the, there's so much more, and I, I think, you know, all I can tease is that PTZ Optics and NewTek are working very, very closely on some, some things that make all of this integration an awful lot better. And, um, you know, I think that it's, it's, I think we share a, very much the vision with PT, PTZ Optics that, you know, very here soon in the future, we're going to be going all IP. You're going to be controlling your cameras directly and you're going to have everything just work if it's on the same network. And so I think that, you know, the, we're only at the beginning when it comes to integration here, in my opinion. Yeah, and uh, you know, we just released a couple weeks ago that we're building PoE into the cameras, so it, it's not far away to think that one IP connection to the camera could power it, control it, and ho hopefully have zero latency live video off of it. So that's where we're headed. Um, let's talk a little bit about the future. I wanted to briefly mention that you've been nominated for the Streaming Media Awards for Best Encoding Box. Congratulations. Um, PTZ Thanks. Optics was also nominated for Best Pan Tilt Zoom Camera. So I wish awesome. both of our companies the best of luck there. Um, <laughs> we kind of dove into a little bit about the future. I do th think that we kind of just talked about it. I mean, one IP cable, isn't that kind of the dream? Just one connection to your video. Same thing for audio, same thing for your TriCaster, right? Well, it is, and, but, but uh, to me, the, 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 you know, we're, we're very focused right now on, the, on that cable and the, how the video is interchanged over that cable. And yet five or six years from now, we will not be thinking about how it's interchanged because it will just work. So maybe more exciting is not what the fact of being on IP is how that's going to work, which is what I think a lot of us at the moment are kind of talking about, but what it's going to allow people to do. And I think, you know, so certainly when you're thinking about cameras and you're thinking about, um, 
you know, tr tricasters and, you know, the, the, one of the big limitations of shows right now is how many sources you can have, how easy it is to add sources. And moving to IP is going to completely change that. So, you know, right now, if you're in doing a sports show, for instance, and you have PTZ Optics cameras um, or PTZ cameras of any kind, you're pretty much limited by how many cameras you can wire into your installation, how many cameras you can hook up to your system and make work. And so the, the, the scalability and the kind of shows that you can produce are going to be limited. You have to think, when we get to a world where you can take a camera and all you do is hook it onto an Ethernet jack somewhere in the building, you, know, you can have new cameras whenever you want to cover a new angle on something, whenever you want you know, a, different, a different view, if you want to cover a different kind of show. Adding cameras is going to become very, very easy. This is, by the way, why you guys are very much in the right business. <laughs> the moment you bring IP and cameras, suddenly you're no longer limited to just cameras. And the PTC is really important as well because, um, you know, the, the, the problem with adding lots of cameras is operators. And that is why PTC cameras are so much more important. You don't need an operator for them. And so the combination of IP, PTC, to me, are, are huge, huge directions that we're going in. And they're going to enable all sorts of new shows because you're no longer limited to just how many cameras you can bring in. And it makes it very easy to extend your show, to start doing new things in your shows, to, to just add cameras and, and work with cameras in ways that you weren't, just weren't possible before. And I think that that is very much where, where we're all headed. Well, thank you so much. That's all the time we have today. If you can hang around for just 10, 15 minutes, we're going to have an open q and I'm going to roll the credits. And thank you so much, Andrew. This has been super Hi, informative. Pleasure. Okay, we are back in the post show where we answer your questions on YouTube Live. I have with me Andrew Cross, and we have a ton of questions. <laughs> so let me scroll through here um, and try to pick out a few. Um, looks like one of your customers is here. He runs a 460 setup with four HDSDI runs in an arena. Um, he has live text and replay together, and they're very happy with the setup, but they're concerned about the upgrading to advanced and potentially having to upgrade hardware. I'm, I don't know much about the 460. Um, maybe, I guess you would know a little more about that? Well, um, it's, going to uh, it, it, it's going to depend if they are an upgraded 450, that upgraded to 460. Um, but generally speaking, something that we have always, and this came right back to the first thing you asked me, I mean, our goal has always been to make our technology accessible to people and you know, although he should check with whoever his local reseller is or check with new tech, there is a really good chance that he's just going to be able to upgrade to advanced using a, you know, as a software upgrade. Generally speaking, our goal is to, to allow people who bought our systems potentially five, six, seven years ago to continue to use the latest technology today. And we work really hard on, on I mean, it's actually quite remarkable. I was just highlighting this to somebody just yesterday how if you look at what the product was when they bought it and how far and how much more it does today without them ever having to upgrade anything, that's something we pride ourselves with. So my best guess is that he would be able to upgrade it. But he should probably check with somebody who actually knows the specifics of his, his installation. But my best guess is that he can. Okay. Um, next question here is Chad Lafarge is asking, he's saying, please ask Andrew how long before we'll have an NDI to send directly from a mobile device? Um, hey, actually, I'm not just text, te te testing my, my t texting here. I can, I'll, I'll do something better for you. Um, here you go. Um, this is basically it. This is um, NDI camera basically running on my iPhone. Um, it is about, it is about to be launched for Android, iOS here really, really, really soon. We're somewhat at the mercy of the, the app stores in terms of the authorization process and getting all that online. But I, the, the answer, I mean, 
this almost could have been a planted question. <laughs> the, the answer is within, within days, not months. Wow. Well, there's a good question. I'm glad they asked about that. In fact, he's asking <coughs> if there uh, could potentially be some type of NDI 2.0. Is that so, so like in, in the progress or is it just NDI is what NDI is and it's just continually evolving or are there actual like 2.0, 3.0 plans? So we actually announced at IBC what we're calling NDI 2.0, which okay. does include new functionality. And it, it's actually, I should be clear, it's completely backwards compatible. So version one works with two, two works with one. So it's both directions compatible. You don't need to upgrade anything. There's no compatibility problems. And in fact, this is... You know, one of the biggest reasons that we have kept NDI largely as an SDK instead of just publishing the protocol is that it enables us to progress it very quickly. It allows us to maintain compatibility so we don't need to have testing every device against every other device to check that it performs well. You know, we don't need an interrupt zone. It's all just going to work together, which is actually part of the magic of NDI. So we do have an NDI too, and it does add a bunch of new stuff. I'm sure that you can get the details on our website. We announced that at IBC, the SDK is about to go into beta. Um, there's a couple of people already using it and already producing apps with it. Um, about to happen really quickly here. Wonderful. And I think they're asking a little bit more about the NDI mobile applications. They're asking if there's a beta program potentially or if the SDK will include anything with the mobile. So we, we have a mobile SDK. So part of NDI 2.0 is we announced a mobile SDK so that uh, vendors who want to generate NDI feeds from mobile applications, they can do that through the SDK. So that you kind of have two sides of things. You have the SDK, and then you have the tools that go along with NDI. And you know, I would say that the, the, you know, the mobile apps themselves, so our camera apps that make basically NDI available to anybody who has a, pretty much any mobile device at this point, um, those are those are released separate from the SDK, so that any u end user can use them who wants to. Cool. Um, and uh, just a couple more questions. It seems like the um, they're asking about the minimum recommended upload bandwidth um, if they want to do streaming, and also uh, what what the NDI bandwidth is actually taking up on the local area network. Okay, so it's hard to give a single one answer, you know, one soundbite answer to that, because it depends on a number of things. Um, I think a good benchmark is you need in the ballpark of 100 megabits per stream. Um, you should, you know, it's always better to, say, to assume that you want slightly more than that if you can, but, but that's a good ballpark. So that's what a 1080i signal would typically take. Um, so, you know, if you want to go up to 4K, it's going to take a bit more than that. If you're doing SD, it's going to take a bit less than that. Um, typically, you also have to, just if you're trying to do the calculations to work out how many streams you can carry, you need to assume that, that your network, even one gigabit, you're only going to get to about 80% efficiency. So you can get, you know, I always say you can get in the ballpark of eight streams per one gigabit. Um, feel free to hook up faster networks, hook up, you know, hook up multiple network ports. So, you know, there's lots of ways to get more bandwidth. Chad Lafarge is telling me to give you his thanks for answering his question. Um, Roberto uh, Lovano is asking, does he need a separate Wowza cloud account in order to take advantage of the NDI integration that you have cr uh, created? So um, the Wowza integration, that, that is a, a separate product currently. We work closely with them and, I, I, and Wowza are working with us on NDI. Um, it's hard to, in a generic way, answer his question. He should he should email us or email Welser. I'm sure we can work out exactly what he wants to do and give him an answer to that. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly, you know, the, I, I can't give the completely no, that, correct answer. That's a good point. <laughs> the yeah. question's a little vague. Um, <clears throat> another question here. They're asking about, can, can NDI be used over Wi-Fi um, 802.11ac? Is that possible? Yes, it can. Um, so obviously our mobile app <laughs> has to be over Wi-Fi and it does work over Wi-Fi. Working over Wi-Fi does require some care though. And the, the biggest problem that we have in a practical sense seen over Wi-Fi is that when you have, so even if you have an AC network, if you have a 
a, another mobile device on that network that is not doing full AC. It can pull the whole speed of the network down so that even a high performing device doesn't perform that well. So Wi-Fi, it requires some care, but you can do it over Wi-Fi just fine. Yeah, I know a lot of people were talking about that and um, they're asking, okay, so if Wi-Fi works, what about the wide area network? Are there any solutions for connecting Hong Kong to New York, for example, with, with uh, NDI? So, so there is a bunch of ways of doing that. Um, so obviously, if you have enough bandwidth, of which plenty of people do, you can, you can just, you know, you can, I mean, you can rent bandwidth. So if you're in a broadcast type environment, you can rent the bandwidth and you can run NDI over, over you know, wide, wide, long, very long distances relatively easily. Certainly when you compare it to the price of renting satellite time, it, it's, it, it's almost free. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you want to go over the wide area network at very low cost, um, you know, there are some solutions out there. And, you know, like NDI Cloud from Siena, that's a cool product. You should go and check that out. Um, but, you know, there, there are a number of other companies and a number of, number of other solutions that, that are going to either provide that functionality today or in the future. Um, but there are solutions today for people who want them. Well, that is very interesting um, because I know everyone's trying to basically take what you've created and push it to the limits. I'm sure you're used to that. You know, we want to do it over Wi-Fi. We want to do That's it over the wide area network. <laughs> it's funny because I, I get questions, you know, we get questions from broadcasters who say, what the heck? 100 megabits, that's way too, too compressed. And then you have people at the other end of the spectrum are trying to send it over the internet to go, oh my gosh, 100 megabits, that is just a huge amount of bandwidth. So it seems that, you know, <laughs> some people want it higher, some people want it lower um, <laughs> and it's in the middle. Um, I, I think that, you know, ultimately what's going to happen over time is that there are going to be good solutions to, to all of those problems. Um, I, I expect us, we have targeted where we see the big opportunity. The big opportunity is enabling the middle level of broadcast to do IP video. And that is what NDI is for. And I think that people are always going to try to pull it up and pull it down into the low end and up into the high end. And those are things that we will get there. Um, New tech are actively pursuing those things. And you can ex look, we're at NDI 2.0 after a year. We're about to do mobile apps. You can look at the number of people are using it. You can expect it to do more and more and more. Just take the, re the pace that it's already gone through and extrapolate that forward. And, you know, you're going to, you should expect it to, to do lots more very quickly. Um, here's a question we get, we get a lot, and um, I, I get this question a lot. When, is tri when are TriCasters going to be uh, ready for 4K? Oh, I, I have to defer on that, I'm afraid. I, I, we just don't talk about future products. Um, this is what I will say, which is, if look at where Tri... I, I would invite anybody to look at where TriCaster was just two years ago and look how far it's come in just two years. And then you take, uh, I always say, for those who come and watch my, my presentations at NAB, I kind of pride myself by saying, look, in the last year, we've done more than we've ever done before. I, I want to see us, us accelerating our pace, pace of innovation, not, not, not even keeping constant with what we've done in the past. So just assume that whatever we're going to do, and whenever we do it, it's going to be groundbreaking and probably take people by surprise. <laughs> now, we innovated in IP. Um, we're giving an IP, a IP workflow when probably if you go back a year and a half before NDI was announced, most people would have said, you know, IP, that's off in the five, ten year time frame. Now we're already talking about it today and a lot of people are using it today. Just assume that we're going to be pushing the limits no matter what. Um, that is safe to assume and, you know, whatever comes after 4K, it'll be the same. It's our goal and our, what we're good at is innovation. We're going to continue doing that. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's the answer that I, I will give. Well, thank you. And I get that question a lot, too. And, and our, our kind of answer to that is we're waiting for, um, kind of from what you've said, a, a little bit of a similar answer where we're waiting for it to become affordable and practical, but also push the boundaries of what the, the things that we have on the docket already, like power over Ethernet with a 1080p 60 camera, I feel like is more important than a 4K camera where we didn't even finish PoE yet. So I, there's obviously like a progressions that you just have to take. And, yep. you know, with new tech NDI, like you said, I mean, 
you, you got to get it out there and then you find out a million different ways of people using it. And, you know, it's just you guys are breaking the borders. It's amazing. Well, well look, here's the thing. It all boils down to, you know, and I think that PTG Optics like us, you, you, you sit back and you go, OK, there are all these buzzwords out there. What are the things that are going to change the lives for your customers, for our customers? And um, IP, look, it doesn't matter where 4K goes. It's going to be over IP. Actually, this is a huge thing. I mean, if you look at our NDI 2 announcements, we're already talking about 4K and NDI 2. So if you get onto NDI, you get onto IP, you're ready for 4K in many ways. Um, so it's just one of the things that are going to change our customers' lives. If we give them 4K, cameras are 4K and monitors are 4K, but nothing between them really is 4K. You can't get the content around yet. So you, you have to think, OK, so uh, until we can bring a solution that does really enables it for people, that's not the best thing that's going to change their lives. And so, you know, just like power of Ethernet, that changes the way you will use your cameras today. That stuff matters. That makes a difference. And, and I, I, like yourselves, I think, want to focus on the things that can really make a difference for people today and to make sure that we're staying true to a vision of where, where you know, innovation really is going, of which 4K absolutely will be part of it. Um, but, you know, let, let's be doing things that really matter today. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I want to give everyone a last chance. If you have a burning question, ask it now because I know Andrew's got to go. I want to respect mm -hmm. his time. We already did um, a 20 minute show. This has been about a 20 minute Q&A. There's a couple more questions coming in. Um, uh, Verdant Art is saying some use cases with Voyo Cam and NDI. Um, where do you think that this might be used? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm having trouble turning that into a question. Um, I'm afraid I don't know how to answer that. Um, shoot us an email. I'll, I'll get him an answer if he tells me what he's interested in and we'll work out how we can do it. Okay. Okay, well, that's good. I mean, some people are saying in here that 4K does matter today and that um, cable companies are already compressing 4K content at, at 40 to 1. So again, guys, I think it's, 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 gonna, it's coming. I mean, I can even say that PTC Optics has plans for 4K as well. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it's one pit bowling pin down, then the next, and then the next. Yeah. You know, you, you, you can't rush everything. Um, trying to think if I had any last questions for you. I, I think that we really covered everything. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, thank okay. you, everyone who's been out there watching, asking questions. We appreciate it. Andrew, I hope we can have you on again, maybe in a year or so, after you've done a million other innovating and groundbreaking things. <laughs> I'll take a year before we do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're right. Maybe I'll need you. I'll need to have you on every quarter. Who knows? But th again, <laughs> thank knows? you so much, so much for coming. It, it, this has been one of the most exciting shows we've ever had. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone out there. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you, New Tech. Thank you, YouTube, for hosting all of this. And um, that's our show. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs>